Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So it is the beginning of July, which means it is time for my June 2021 wrap up. This month I was able to get through six novels. Well, technically five novels and one short story collection, but we'll get into that. Um, and this was a pretty solid reading month. I will say I did have a five star read this month. I'm very, very excited. And the lowest rating I had was a three star. So all around pretty solid reads, really content with this month. And uh, let's dive right in. So first up, I read Animal, which is a book that was sent to me by the authors. So Manish K. Batra and Keith R. A. De Candido. This is a collaboration. Um, Manish Batra is actually a doctor and then Keith Candido is an author and they collaborated to bring us Animal. Um, so yes, this book was sent to me in exchange for an honest review. I don't get any money out of any of this. I don't make money off YouTube in general. Um, but <laughs> So this is the this is an interesting story. This is a crime thriller. There is a serial killer on the loose who is glo globally on the loose and he's targeting people who hurt or abuse animals and therefore killing them in the same nature that they harm animals. Um, this book gave me serious seven vibes like the movie with Brad Pitt. Um, very very similar in tone. Um, I have to say well I did enjoy this book. Um, there, there were definitely some problems for me. I thought the actual story was really interesting. I really liked it being from the perspective of um, basically a cop who has been tracking down this killer for years and then a novice detective who kind of come together to join forces. Um, where I found issues were a little bit of like the, the overall tone and message of this book. Uh, the serial killer again is targeting people who harm animals and where I would think like yes like somebody who runs like a dog fighting ring um or like at one point there is somebody that they attack who was like the um exploitative owner of like a sea world kind of thing who believes in like herding the whales to train them like I understand where that motive is but the serial killer in this novel also tracks down like just hunters you know um like there's there's one character in this novel who is a teenage girl who is a big game hunter. Uh, there is somebody who works at like a meat processing factory and I just kind of felt that like the message got lost because the people who were targeted in this novel as like bad guys to me didn't all read like bad guys. Some really really did and some didn't and the whole message of this is basically anybody who eats animals is kind of bad. Um, I do know that the author is vegan um, so I do see that point. Um, if you're vegan, power to you. I don't know how you do it. I try really, really hard to eat as friendly as possible, but I know that that's a little difficult for me. Um, but I just found the, the message in this to be a little too sympathetic with the serial killer. And I've talked about this in the past that I don't like that angle. I don't like sympathizing with the serial killer. Um, I find that a little off-putting. Um, and I will say that I felt that, um, the use of diversity in this book felt a little forced in some areas. Um, I thought it was really, this is a very inclusive, very diverse cast of characters inside of this novel and some were handled very, very, very well. Our main characters are an older Asian gentleman and um, an LGBTQ uh, female police officer. They were great, but then you'll have these moments where I felt like the diversity was really just shoved down your throat. Our main character, um, we know that she just broke up with her girlfriend and she's very devastated about that. And I kind of wish that it had just been like written naturally. Um, however, the author did choose to be like, she is a lesbian, she is a lesbian, like very, like just so you know, like actually had like characters kind of say that. And I felt that that was very tone deaf and it just felt very, very forced. Um, and they did this a couple other times to be like, this person is of this race, they are of this race, you know? And it was very just like jarring and it really took me out of the moment because up until that point, the writing showed that these characters were from these races or these backgrounds or these sexualities. But then to have to like sit and like put a big old billboard, it, it just felt forced and unnatural. And I just wanted these characters to be written in a way that we would write you know, any general character. Um, having it just in big neon lights, I felt really, really, um, just kind of written in almost like a tone deaf way. 
Um, beyond that, though, I did I did overall enjoy this book. Um, it does have some hiccups. It does have a few little plot holes, and it is very very gory and disturbing. But I did enjoy it. This. Um, I thought was a very interesting read, especially being in a collaboration with somebody who's never actually written um, a novel before. I did actually enjoy um, reading so much of like the medical perspective of how some of these murders took place. So that was really, really cool. Okay, next up I have In the Woods by Tana French. I picked this book up because um, Monty reads on Instagram raved about this novel. I've never read anything by Tana French before um, and this is a detective series. It is book one in the Dublin Murder Squad series. Each one I believe though is like a standalone. Um, they don't really follow the same main character and it's just about the Dublin murder division and the crimes that they solve. I really liked this book. Um, it's the story of two detectives trying to connect a current case to an older case that one of our main characters um, was involved in as a child and kind of going down the rabbit hole to see how these cases are connected and how their paths intertwine. What's really interesting about this book is it focuses on um, the psychology of the detectives more so than the actual case. I really liked getting inside the mind of these cops. Um, they're both very, very flawed characters. Our protagonist, um, Ryan is way more flawed than his partner Cassie, but I really did enjoy how all of this unfolded. This was a four star read for me. Oh, Animal was a three star read. I don't know if I said that. That was a three star read, but this was a four star read for me. Um, it's definitely a slow burn. I know that somebody on Reddit told me that this was almost like a gothic pacing, and I totally see that. I wouldn't call this a gothic novel. But it is a very atmospheric slow burn of a read. I will say the one thing that bothers me is that there is a crime committed that is very pivotal to the story that does not get solved at the end. And at first I was like, oh, it's a series, so maybe it'll get solved later on in series. Apparently it doesn't. We never find out the answer. Um, and the author has said that this was a conscious decision that originally she was going to solve it. So there is, I think, answers in the book, and I've read some threads that try and solve it online. But she wanted to leave it up in the air to like just, I guess, show that it doesn't really matter to the plot at the end of the day, which makes sense to me from like a writer's perspective or a character development perspective. But I really wish it had been solved because that was what I was most interested in about this. Um, I did like how everything kind of wove, uh, was woven together. Uh, I really like how everything came together. And I really liked that there's like a real element of karma in this novel. Um, it's kind of like the underlying theme throughout this book. It's just karma. And I just I really enjoyed this. This was a great slow burn. I picked up another one of Tana French's novels and we'll be reading that very, very soon as well. I have a book haul coming up where I will talk about that there. But yeah, this was a four star read for me. This was really fun. Okay, third is Wisteria Cottage by Robert M. Coates. This was another three star read for me. This is a really interesting novel. This is another um, psychology focused book. Yeah, and it is about a man named Richard who finds a beach house for his, um, friends to go and stay in and his friends are two like mid-twenties women and their mother and as he is at the beach house he slowly divulges into madness and plots their murder ish um what i thought was really cool about this is this is fully inspired by two real life murders that happened around the same time that this took place um this is also set in long island and manhattan which is really cool i live in manhattan so whenever i read books set where i live i get really excited um, and what worked for me is I really did like the idea of the psychology of the murderer. I liked that you know from the beginning that this is surrounding, um, a murder. If you read the, the, like, intro, it tells you right off the bat that this is based off real murders. Um, so it's really cool knowing that this is not going to end well for the characters in the book. However, the psychology in our main character felt a little all over the place. It was difficult to follow. Um, the thought threads kind of got lost and therefore it felt very slow. Like I felt like this would have worked almost better as a short story than a short novel just because it really dragged on and felt a little repetitive. I understand that perhaps that is how this, the murderer's mind might actually work, but to me it didn't quite grip me being um, 
written this way in this form for this novel. Um, but it, w it was really cool. I really, really liked the setting. Um, it did a great job of showing the insanity of this main character along with how he was able to basically put forward a, a sane facade, if that makes sense. So this is definitely an interesting one to check out. I did get this in my February 2021 Nightworms. Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. It did drag a little bit. So fourth, this is another three star read um, in parts. And this is the Algernon Blackwood collection. It is four short stories by Algernon Blackwood. I picked this up because it has The Willows in it, which is the short story that inspired T. Kingfisher's Hollow Places. I have an entire review on Hollow Places on my channel. I'll link that up above. But I really wanted to read the source material that inspired that novel because I loved it so much. And I've actually never read anything by Algernon Blackwood before. So there are four short stories in here, uh, The Empty House, The Damned, The Willows, and The Wendigo. Algernon Blackwood is probably best known for The Wendigo and The Willows. I love Wendigo stories, as y'all know. Um, and the reason it is a three star read for me is because The Empty House and The Damned were both haunted house stories that I just wasn't gripped by. I found my mind constantly wandering while I was reading it. And I just wasn't the biggest fan of those. However, I loved the Wendigo and I loved the Willows. So those were five stars and the other two were like, I get almost like two, three stars for me. Um, like two star, three stars, whatever. So this whole thing I'm giving a three star rating, even though the Wendigo and the Willows is amazing. They're very atmospheric. Um, they are nature-based, outdoorsy adventure stories, um, heavily, heavily um, basing fear on the unknown and these explorers who are put in foreign situations that cannot quite figure out what's going on and is being haunted by the Wendigo or the Willows. I just found amazing. If you've never read those two short stories, highly, highly, highly recommend them. Unfortunately, Blackwood's haunted house stories don't give off that, that fear of the uncanny the way that the Willows and the Wendigo do. But those books were great. Once I read this and then I compared it to T. Kingfisher's The Hollow Places, I was like mind blown. Um, I'm actually very happy I read The Hollow Places before I read this because I feel like The Hollow Places might have been a little ruined for me knowing kind of what happens and what the willows are. All right, next up, I read Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is my buddy read this month with my friend Shannon, um, also known as Find Me in the Footnotes on Instagram. And I love this book. Oh my God, this is my five star read. I can't believe I've never read this before. Like this is a diehard classic. I can't believe this was written by Emily Bronte's sister because I could not stand Wuthering Heights and this book was incredible. This is one of the most feminist classic novels I've ever read. Jane is such a badass. She is so independent, so just amazing, such a role model. I wish I had read this when I was like 15 years old. Like I got some of the feels that I got when I read The Scarlet Letter. Um, and seeing Hester Prynne is kind of like this feminist icon for me. I saw this with Jane Eyre. The twists and turns in this novel, the love stories in this novel, the, the dark brooding landscapes, the housing, the just everything about this novel was just incredible. There is a twist in the dead center of this book that took me so off guard. And it's actually like a trope um, now in a lot of like horror. And I was like, Th that came from this? That came from this, this big, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna be doing a full dissecting gothic lit on Jane Eyre. So I'm not gonna go too, too deep into this right now, but oh my God, read this. Oh, it was so, so, so good. Um, and if you've never read it before, it is the story of a girl who is orphaned, basically rejected by her living family members, sent to a boarding school, and then after boarding school, tries to find her way in the world with her strange past kind of haunting who she is and who she's becoming. I I loved this. This was amazing. This is one of the most feminist books I've ever read. I think the only issue I had with this whole novel was like the last page focused on a more negative character and probably shouldn't have focused on that character. Like I wish it had just ended with our protagonist and not even spoken at all about lesser characters because it just ended on kind of a weird note but whatever it was like the 1840s or something. I'm, sure there was a reason for it, but oh, this book is so good. I read this book. I can't believe it took me so long to read it. Um, again, we'll be doing a full, full in-depth video on that, so I don't want to talk too, too much on it right now. And then last but... Launching books. 
Uh, last but not least, speaking of T. Kingfisher, I read The Twisted Ones. I actually have a book haul coming out in a few days where this is in the haul. I honestly didn't expect to read this in like two days um, and finish it as quickly as I did, but I did, so it ended up being at the very tail end of June. Literally finished it yesterday. Um, so yes, so this is The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. It is much like The Hollow Places inspired by another famous um, horror short story, and it is inspired by the white people by author Machin. Machin? I'm not sure. It's about a girl who comes to clean out her grandmother's house down in North Carolina and discovers that there is something sinister in the woods. I liked this book a lot. This was a four star read from me. Um, it's, it's definitely very folk horror. There's definitely some cosmic being elements in this that felt more folksy than cosmic. I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you decide if it's cosmic horror or folk horror when you read it. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of really scary images in this book. I will say the one thing that kind of took me out of this novel is it's very similar to The Hollow Places. If you read The Hollow Places, you have a protagonist, her barista, go on adventures, right? This, it's kind of protagonist, has great relationship with barista, goes on adventures with her neighbor. Like, there, like there's a very significant um, emphasis on pets and the importance of pets in both novels. Um, there's both entering secret places that most people can't get to. There's finding journals and reading journals to figure out what's going on. There's a lot of similar, similar, similar things um, in both The Hollow Places and The Twisted Ones, even though they're very different stories. And I think the one thing that really did knock this down to a four star read for me was just the vast similarities between The Hollow Places and The Twisted Ones. I did like The Hollow Places better, but I did really, really like this. Um, I didn't expect it to go the way it did. I will say that there was definitely a moment where I really thought it was going to really bleed into like true horror. Um, T. Kingfisher does a lot of T. Kingfisher does a lot of body horror, and there was definitely a moment, um, or I should say, a missed opportunity where I really thought body horror was going to come very, very prominently forward, and it didn't. Um, there's definitely a few unanswered questions in this that I feel like might be answered if I read the white people. Um, and it does rely very, very heavily on the white people. Um, there's transcriptions from parts of the white people in this novel. Um, so she has this whole section where she's basically summarizing um, a large portion of it, like something that happened, I assume, in the white people. She says in her author's note that it does. And what she wanted to do was summarize it from her own memory so it felt more natural and organic instead of just straight up remembering every single thing that happened in real detail because that wouldn't actually happen in real life. And I thought she executed that very, very, very well. Um, I know a lot of people have like critiqued the, um, <laughs> the annoyingness of the way she wrote the dog Bongo in this. Um, I see why people are annoyed with that. He almost comes off as like this like screaming toddler throughout the book. He's not a very well trained dog. And that's definitely problematic to the story, but it does drive the plot. Um, again, I liked it. There were some fun characters. It was very creepy. It was very atmospheric. Um, but I will say that I found my mind kind of glossing over some of the scenes sometimes because it just felt a little repetitive or I had known it already from like the tone of the hollow places and the plot in the hollow places. Definitely prefer the hollow places, but this was a great read. It's very spooky. It's not terrifying and it could have been terrifying. Um, the, the final act, I thought, was a missed opportunity to be really, really, really scary, but almost went more on, like, the happy, cliche, very Darcy Coates kind of cozy horror towards the end. But I did really, really enjoy this. I'm so excited, um, because T. Kingfisher just announced she has another, um, horror-inspired novel coming out in 2022. I forget what it's called, but it's gonna be a spin on the fall of the House of Usher, which is one of my favorite stories by Poe ever. So yeah, four-star read enjoyed it, didn't love it. Um, but yeah, so those are the six books that I have for you all today. I was very pleased with this month. I really enjoyed a lot of the books that I had. I had my crime thrillers, my old school gothics, and of course some new modern horror, and I'm really content with that. I have a ton of new releases that I will be reading in July, and I also have a giveaway going up on my channel on July, yeah, on July 2nd. Um, 
I am working with um, author Amy McCaw to give away her latest novel, Mina and the Undead. It is set in 1995 New Orleans and it is a romp down horror nostalgia lane. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I will be reading it in July. So if you are interested in getting a chance to win this book, just check out my Instagram. Um, so on July 2nd, and it'll be the contest will be open for about a week. So, uh, so yeah, so I will have this um, all the info on this giveaway up on July 2nd. Um, this is a thank you for getting me to a thousand followers on Instagram. I'm so so stoked on that, and yeah, I want to just be able to give my followers something back. So yeah, um, be on the lookout for that. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you enjoy my videos, I post every. Monday and Thursday. You can hit those like and subscribe buttons. That helps me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.